Looking far and wide, up and down the mountainside, in search of a creature that can only be found on Vancouver Island. This crew is part of the Vancouver Island Marmot Recovery Project, and this is their first field trip out of the season to find out who survived the winter. This is a training day. We, we've got four new members of the team uh, who have not done uh, marmoting before at all. So we're, we're coming out to Mount Washington, which is where we know that there are marmots out and that they've come out of hibernation. Uh, so we'll be testing our equipment, showing the, the new people how to use the telemetry equipment and, and what to, data re to record when we do see marmots. Ripped out right ear tag, only has left ear tag now, or um, seen with five yearlings. The Vancouver Island Marmot Recovery Foundation was established in 1998. It links various groups from industry, government and the community. This non-profit organization was founded to save the Vancouver Island marmots from extinction. Probably the lowest, the smallest number of marmots that we know of was in 2003. There were fewer than 30 marmots in the wild. And not only were there small numbers, but there was really limited distribution. So those 30 marmots were on just five different mountains, which is not a very big distribution. And, and that's a problem because these marmots have to be, these colonies have to exist in many different mountains in order for them to exchange members and keep genes flowing. They connect to other colonies through a process called dispersal. Dispersal happens when marmots are teenagers. You know, they grow up, they learn how to be independent, and they decide, well, maybe they don't want to live with mom and dad anymore. So they leave their colony and they go join another colony. And that might be where they have a family and where they spend the rest of their life. The recovery project efforts have been successful in providing more options for dispersing marmots, as well as increasing the population. Right now, we have somewhere between 200 and 300 marmots, and they're distributed on 25 different mountains. There's a strong signal coming from that marmot down there, so I think that marmot's Hollis. We're pretty excited to see that Hollis is still around because she's done a great job producing pups for us. So I thought I heard Eddie for just a second. It's a lot colder up here. Do they come out in the cold? They do come out in the cold. I mean, they have to eat too. Um, but they're obviously a little smarter than we are because they're underground right now. And though we didn't see them. We didn't see them, no. But you did we hear did them. We did hear them and we heard them on fast, which means that they are warm, their transmit is warm, and that means that they are alive. And they survived the winter. They survived the winter together. If this program wasn't happening, then I think um, the marmots are in what's called the Ali effect, which is where the population is so small that any um, harsh winter or uh, a lot of predation in one spot or in, in one time period would be enough to uh, make them go extinct. Efforts have included captive breeding programs, transmitter implants and relocation. They've also set up a YouTube channel to raise awareness and share the excitement about this unique creature. They're amazing to watch. Um, and I'm just, I'm so excited to be able to share that with other people. And you can really see, I mean, you can see how beautiful they are just from looking at photos. But to actually get to watch their behavior and their interactions, I find that the most amazing part. So the fact that we now have this YouTube channel and we can share this with the public and they can really get a sense for the, the personality and the way that these marmots behave, is, that's just so amazing to me. Recovery efforts have been very successful but there's still a long ways to go to keep the Vancouver Island marmot safe from extinction. On Mount Washington, I'm Kelly Robinson.